Our first step is to just label three rectangles. We have this rectangle right here, which we will call A. We have this large rectangle right here that we will call B. And then we have that little rectangle or square down here, which we will call C. Now, it turns out that finding the area of these three rectangles will be very useful to us. So let's go ahead and calculate the area of rectangle A. That's just going to be 4L times 1L, which of course is 4L squared. The area of rectangle B, well, the total length is 7L, and then the width is 2L. So 7L times 2L, 14L squared. And then the area of C is 2L times 2L, which of course is 4L squared. If we add these areas together, we get a total area of 22L squared. Now, why did we do that? Well, because we are told that the plate is uniform. So that means that the mass of each rectangular piece of the plate is proportional to its area. So the greater the area of a particular rectangle, the greater its mass. And we can use that idea to come up with expressions for the mass of each rectangle. For example, the mass of rectangle A would equal 4L squared which is its area, divided by the total area, which is 22L squared. Technically, the mass isn't equal to that, it's proportional to that, but for the purposes of finding the center of mass coordinates, that will not matter. So we end up with 4 over 22 as a representation of the mass of rectangle A. Let's do the same thing for the other two rectangles. Very good. And notice that the total mass, which we will need later, we will symbolize with capital M, would just be the sum of those three fractions. But of course, that's just going to equal one. You can verify that for yourself. We next look for the coordinates of the geometric center of each rectangle. So for example, if we look at rectangle A, we mark the center and we would see that to get to the center along the x-axis would be 2L. And well, this is going to be a little more tricky to go to the y coordinate, we'd have to go up 2L and then go another half of an L. So that's 2.5L for the Y coordinate. So to summarize, the coordinates for that point are going to be 2L comma 2.5L. We will be needing those in a moment. Let's just clean that up a little bit. And now we want to look at the other rectangle, rectangle B. This one's a little tricky too. You're going to have to go over negative 1L to get to the X. We'll mark that down. The Y is tricky, isn't it? Because this total distance is 7L. So the center would be at 3.5L in terms of its distance. But as far as the Y coordinate is concerned, let's see, to go 3, we know that this distance here is 3L. We'd have to go another half of an L to get to the actual center there. So in fact, we mark the center in a somewhat strange spot. This should be the geometric center here and we would have to go down negative half L to get there. So that was a little tricky, but we know that the Y coordinate now of the center of mass of that rectangle would be negative 0.5 L. And then finally we look here, and to get the X coordinate, we'd have to go a distance of one L, and then, let's mark that down before we forget, to get the Y coordinate, we'd have to go down, let's see, two L and then one more L, that's a total of 3L, but it's in the negative Y direction, so that's negative 3L. So those coordinates will serve us in just a moment. Let's take a look at the equation for the X coordinate of the center of mass next. So here is that equation. It looks a little intimidating, but it won't be as you will see. We've summarized the information for the three rectangles. We put a column in for the mass of each rectangle as well as the X and Y coordinates of each rectangle. We're only looking at the X coordinates right now for part A, so let's just clear out the Y. And all we need to do to calculate the X coordinate of the center of mass is to begin by doing one over the total mass. Now recall the total mass was represented as just one, so this is really just one over one. And then we multiply by this summation here. Very simple, you're just multiplying the mass by the X coordinate for each rectangle. So you would have four over 22, multiplied by positive 2L plus, and then 14 over 22, multiplied by negative 1L, and so on. So then we would have plus 4 over 22 multiplied by positive 1L. Now we just need to simplify this. 1 divided by 1, of course, is 1. So now we just have, multiplying the fractions, 8L over 22 minus 14L over 22 plus 4L over 22. Let's add the numerators together. 
and we get negative 2L over 22. The question noted that L was equal to 5 centimeters, so we can put that in. Punch that into your calculator, and you will get an approximate x-coordinate of the center of mass of negative 0.45 centimeters. This is the correct answer to part A. For part B, we'll do something very similar, but with the y-coordinates. So there is our equation for the y-coordinate of the center of mass. We will do 1 over the total mass of 1. Multiply. Now we've reset the table using the y-coordinates this time, so we have 4 over 22 multiplied by 2.5L plus 14 over 22 multiplied by negative 0.5L, finally plus 4 over 22 times negative 3L. Let's simplify inside those brackets. We're going to have 4 times 2.5, which is 10L over 22, minus, let's see, 14 times a negative half, so minus 7L over 22, and then we have a minus 12L over 22. Let's combine the numerators. This gives us negative 9L over 22. And finally, we will plug in the value given for L, which was 5 centimeters. And if you simplify that, you will see that the y-coordinate for the center of mass of this plate is approximately negative 2.0 centimeters. And this is the correct answer to part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.